What is going on, Mark Duffy? Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, I'm going to be putting the new Samyang 85mm f1.4 Mark II to the test up against the Sony G Master and the Sigma R. Let's see how it stacks up against these much loved 85mm lenses. Big shout out to Birmingham Cameras in Dublin for supplying both the Sony and the Sigma lenses for me to actually do this test. All links will be in the description below. Now, full disclosure, Sam Yang did reach out to me to build promotional material for the launch that they had a couple of weeks ago for this lens and they gave me the lens in exchange for that. But this has no influence on my thoughts or opinions on the lens. This is a straight down line comparison between the two top 85 millimeters on the market. Let's see how it gets on. You're gonna be seeing the EVF from my camera so you'll be able to determine what you think about this lens.
Let's compare the physical differences between each of the lenses. Both the Sony and the Sigma have a 77 mm tread, while the Samyang has a 72 mm tread, so for an 85 mm that to me is quite unique. All lenses feature a metal mount to the rear of them with a rubber gasket for weather sealing. The Samyang comes in at the lightest at nearly half the weight of the Sony and because of that you would believe that this lens is a little bit less robust than the other lenses because of the weight factor but do you know they're all plastic. Moving on to the focus wheel I found that they all had a nice damped feeling to them um, no real no real feelings to which one I prefer on that one and then um, moving on then down to the buttons both the Sony and the Sigma have an autofocus manual focus switch. The Samyang doesn't. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of lenses not having autofocus and manual focus switches because I have to have a custom button on my camera then to switch between autofocus and manual focus. It does have a switch here that says custom M1 and M2. What that does straight out the box is when you are set to autofocus, you're not going to be using the focus wheel. So you switch it to M2 and that turns your focus wheel into an aperture wheel so you can change the aperture really really nice feature there and then as always on a lot of these lenses you're getting a focus hole button which i never have programmed and on any of the lenses i have i never use so i don't really have any opinions and it is quite cool that you can customize it to whatever i actually must get myself organized to set that and use it because it is on most of the lenses i have now at this stage for my sony system on the sony and the sigma they come with an aperture wheel and you can also de-click them as well for uh, for using for video and the great thing about the Sigma is it actually has a lock so if you don't like using the aperture wheel you can set it to auto and then lock it and it won't move that means you won't be accidentally switching it to f16 while you're on a shoot let's talk about image quality now because there's massive surprises in the results I found with this Sony performed terribly in this low contrast low vibrance washed out overall looking image I wasn't impressed by it with the price point you're paying for Sony I'd expect a lot better than that. For Samyang and Sigma, I was splitting hairs between the two. They're very, very comparable lenses. So I'm gonna put the two of them side by side here and let you decide which is which. A was Sigma and B was Samyang. I know, very, very similar. If I was to give points to which is which, I preferred the colors and the contrast out of the Sigma. And the final test is how well did it do against flaring? I'm gonna use this torch and let's see how did it get on? Did it fall apart? Did it perform really well? Who knows, let's see. Samyang, do you have any anti-glare coating on your lens at all? That was a terrible performance against glare. Let's do another test on flaring. Midday sun like you would be shooting at a wedding, which would be typical when you're outside a church. So let's see how it gets on then. Now that doesn't make any sense. So up against the torch, it fails miserably, absolutely terribly, but then the, when it, you have midday sun, the Sony didn't do well. It had a full rainbow to the bottom. So which do you, which do you want? Do you want the clinical trial or do you want the, re, do you want the reality trial? You know, so I don't know what to say about flaring because Sigma won. <laughs> it's, uh, that's all it's, Sigma won. <laughs> And then for the final comparison, the most important, the price point, how did this stack up against each other? Now, all these prices are coming from Birmingham cameras, so I'm gonna quote them in Euro, but I will give you the sterling equivalent as I found. And it's coming up first, and with no surprise, the Sony G Master was the most expensive at 1,900 euro. Then after that is the Sigma Art, which is coming in at 1,100 euro. With the Samyang, I have not been told an official price, but the price that Birmingham cameras have been given is 929 euro. So 930 euro if we round them all up by that euro. Uh, so yeah, so you're saving 170 euro by going for the Samyang over the Sigma, and you're saving an absolute ton of money by not buying the Sony. Now I know this video has been quite harsh on the Sony 
EKG mass up, but it is justified in my eyes. The price point versus performance, there is a huge, huge difference. Sony need to address this. I actually own the 135mm Sony G Master f1.8, and it's the best lens that I own. So comparing that side by side against the 85, um, yeah. There was no point, <laughs> there was no point. So in conclusion of this comparison, the Sigma 1 Air overall closely followed by the Samyang and then the Sony in last position. So if you were going out to buy an 85mm, you have to decide which you wanna go for. Go for the Sigma or save 170 euro and not lose on quality, uh, maybe just a small bit in performance, but ever so small. Hope you enjoyed this and got something from this. If you did like the video, maybe even subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified every time I put up a new video. Find me on all social medias from Instagram to Vero to TikTok and Twitter, all under Mark Duffy Photography. And until the next time, later Gators.